Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Tuesday Reflections. We are Tuesday, November 24th, 2020, Thanksgiving week. Uh, for many of us, Thanksgiving this year, in addition to uh, what life brings to us, maybe the loss of loved ones and difficulties financially, or maybe we've lost jobs or had to change jobs or any number of things that, that life normally brings. In addition to that, this is the year of the pandemic, Thanksgiving 2020, the pandemic and social unrest and election drama and all that has come with that. Um, many are not sure, many of us are not sure in these days. Everything seems different, everything seems unique, everything seems strange, and everything seems troublesome even. For many of us, uh, this will be a rare Thanksgiving when we're not able to share Thanksgiving with our family and friends and gather together. So. It's a difficult time. So the question I, I'd like to ask today is, how do we as Christians, as followers of Jesus, how do we give thanks this Thanksgiving of 2020? And I'd like to, to go back to a, a story, a true story that I'm sure many, if not all of you have heard before, but the story of Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy uh, when they were taken to Ravensbrook concentration camp in World War II. And I'd just like to share uh, from Corey's perspective uh, the events of that, of that day. Corey and Betsy Tanboom were courageous, compassionate Dutch Christians who helped harbor Jews from the Nazis in Holland during World War II. After the sisters were arrested for doing so, they were imprisoned at Ravensbrück, a German concentration camp. In their barracks, they were shown a sense of massive square platforms stacked three levels high and placed so close together that people had to walk single file to get past them and between them. Rancid straw was scattered over the platforms, which served as communal beds for hundreds of women. Corey and Betsy found they could not sit upright on their own platform without hitting their heads on the deck above them. So they lay back, struggling against nausea that swept over them from the reeking straw. Suddenly, Corey started up, striking her head on the cross slats above. Something had bitten her leg. Fleas! Fleas! she cried out. Betsy, the place is swarming with them. Descending from the platform and edging down a narrow aisle, they made their way to a patch of light in the room. Here! And here another one, Corey wailed. Betsy, how can we live in such a place? Show us how. Show us how, Betsy said matter-of-factly. And it took Corey uh, a moment to realize that her sister was praying. Corey, ben, Betsy then exclaimed excitedly, he's given us the answer. Before we even asked, as he always does, in the Bible this morning, where was it? Read that part again. And Corey checked to make sure no guard, guards were nearby. And, and then she drew from a pouch a small Bible she had managed to smuggle into the concentration camp. It was in 1 Thessalonians, she said, finding the passage in the feeble light. Here it is. Comfort the frightened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to good, do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's it, Betsy interrupted. That's his answer. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's what we can do. We can start right now to thank God for every single thing about this barracks. Corey stared at her incredulously, then around at the dark, foul-smelling room. Such as, she inquired. Well, such as being assigned here together. Corey bit her lip. Oh, yes, thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. And such is what you're holding in your hands. And Corey looked down at the Bible. Yes, thank you, Lord, that there was no inspection when we entered here. 
Thank you for all the women here in this room who will meet you in these pages. Yes, agreed Betsy. Thank you for the very crowding here. Since we're packed so close, so many more will hear. She looked at her sister expectantly and prodded, Corey. Okay, all right. Thank you for the jammed, crammed, stuffed, packed, suffocating crowds, Corey said. Thank you, Betsy continued on serenely, for the fleas and for... Now, this was too much for Corey. She cut in on her sister. Betsy, there's no way, there's no way even God can make me grateful for a flea. Give thanks in all circumstances, Betsy corrected. It doesn't say in pleasant circumstances. Fleas are part of this place where God has put us. So they stood between the stacks of bunks and gave thanks for fleas. Though on that occasion, Corey thought Betsy was surely wrong. As the weeks passed, Betsy's health deteriorated and weakened to the point that rather than needing to go out on work duty each day, she was permitted to remain in the barracks and knit socks together with other seriously ill prisoners. She was a lightning fast knitter and usually had her daily sock quota completed by noon. As a result, she had hours each day she could spend moving from platform to platform, reading the Bible to fellow prisoners. She was able to do this undetected as the guards never seemed to venture into the barracks. One evening when Corey arrived back at the barracks, Betsy's eyes were twinkling. You're looking extraordinarily pleased with yourself, Corey told her. You know, we've never understood why we had so much freedom in the big room, Betsy said, referring to the part of the barracks where the sleeping platforms were. Well, I found out. This afternoon, there was confusion in my knitting group about sock sizes, so we asked the supervisor to come and settle it, but she wouldn't. She wouldn't step through the door, and neither would the guards. And you know why? Betsy could not keep the triumph from her voice as she exclaimed, because of the fleas. That's what she said. That place is crawling with fleas. Corey's mind raced back to their first hour in the barracks. She remembered Betsy bowing her head and thanking God for creatures that Corey could not, could see no use for. Brothers and sisters, may our own lips and hearts overflow with gratitude this Thanksgiving in a Thanksgiving in which we are under, under pressures and under trials and tribulations that we have not seen many of us before, we give thanks to the Lord who has always, always got us in the palm of his hands. I'd like to close with that verse that Corey and Betsy shared that day, as well as a couple of additional verses towards the end. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 we begin with verse 16. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything, hold on to the good, avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a blessed Thanksgiving. See you next time.